we want to find the exact value of cosine 105 degrees using a half angle identity. The most common half angle identities for sine and cosine are given here. For this example, we'll find cosine 105 degrees using this half angle identity. Though some textbooks do refer to these two power reducing identities as half angle identities as well, and for comparison, in the next video, we'll show how to find the same cosine function value using this identity here. But for this example, we'll use this identity. We'll begin by determining the value of A, as well as whether this cosine function value will be positive or negative. Since we have cosine 105 degrees, and on the left side we have cosine A over two, to find A, we'll set A over two, or A divided by two, equal to 105 degrees. So if we multiply both sides by two to solve for A, we'd have A equals two times 105 degrees. So A is equal to 210 degrees. So we've just discovered that cosine 105 degrees is equal to cosine of 210 degrees divided by two. And now looking at the right side, let's determine whether this cosine function value is positive or negative. We're determining the cosine of 105 degrees. So if we were to sketch 105 degrees in center position, we rotate counterclockwise, that'd be 90. We have to rotate 15 degrees more, somewhere in here. So notice how the angle terminates in the second quadrant, where the x coordinate would be negative, and the y coordinate would be positive. And since cosine theta is equal to x over r, and x is negative, we know the cosine function value must be negative. So looking at the right side of our identity, we'll have equals negative, the square root of one plus cosine a, which would be cosine 210 degrees, divided by two. Notice how the denominator of two is underneath the square root. And now for the next step, we'll find cosine 210 degrees. We can do this using a reference triangle or the unit circle. And for review, let's show both. If we were to sketch 210 degrees in standard position, the initial side would be here. If we rotate counterclockwise half a rotation, that'd be 180 degrees. We have to rotate 30 degrees more approximately here. Notice how this shows us that the reference angle would be 30 degrees. So if we sketch a reference triangle, we have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle in the third quadrant. Normally we label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, the longer leg square root three, but because we're in the third quadrant where both x and y are negative, both legs would be negative. So the cosine of 210 degrees would be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is negative square root of three divided by two. Or looking at the unit circle, here's the terminal side of 210 degrees. Because we're on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta. Notice how this verifies cosine 210 degrees is negative square root of three divided by two. So now we have negative square root of one. We'd have plus negative square root three over two, or just minus square root three divided by two, all divided by two. Now let's simplify underneath this square root. Let's clear the denominator of two from the numerator. We can do this by multiplying the numerator by two. But of course, if we multiply the numerator by two, we must also multiply the denominator by two. So this is equivalent to multiplying by two over two underneath the square root. When we distribute the two in the numerator, we'd have two minus square root three divided by two times two would just be square root three, and the denominator would be two times two or four. And now because we have the square root of a fraction, we can write this as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. And notice how the square root of four simplifies to two. So the exact cosine function value of cosine 105 degrees would be negative square root 
of two minus square root three all divided by two. Now let's check this on the calculator. What we'll do is convert this to a decimal and then approximate this cosine function value using the calculator. Let's first get the decimal approximation for the exact value. So we have negative, and then we'll put the numerator in parentheses. So open parenthesis, square root, then we have two minus square root three. Right arrow, right arrow, close parenthesis, divided by two. And now we'll enter cosine 105 degrees to compare. Let's make sure we are in degree mode, so we'll press the mode key. Degree is highlighted. Let's go back to the home screen. Cosine 105 degrees, close parenthesis, enter. And notice how our work does check. There is more thing I do want to mention before we go though. We found the exact value of cosine 105 degrees earlier using the sum identity for a cosine. Let's compare the results using the half angle identity to the sum identity. I've already done most of the work to save time. The sum of difference identity for a cosine is given here. So using this identity, cosine 105 degrees is equal to cosine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. So applying the identity, we would have the difference of these two products. And then finding these trig function values results in the quantity square root two minus square root six divided by four, which looks different than the exact value we found using the half angle identity. Again, using the sum identity for cosine, the result is this exact trig function value. And using the half angle identity for cosine, this was the exact trig function value. But in decimal form, we can tell these two values are exactly the same, even though they look quite different. So depending on what method we use to find the exact value of cosine 105 degrees, the expression might look different, but the value is the same. I hope you found this helpful.